Welcome to another AP Chemistry General Chemistry lesson. My name is Jeremy Krug, and in this lesson, we're looking at acids and bases, continuing our discussion from the last lesson, but this time we're focusing on weak acids and weak bases. In the last lesson, we focused on strong acids, strong bases. This time, it's the weak. Now, when we talk about weak acids and weak bases, specifically weak acids, we find that most acids are weak. Now, what does that mean? Well, there are really only six acids that are strong. This means that they dissociate completely. They break apart into their component ions. And so they look something like this. This is an example of nitric acid, one of those six strong acids. It breaks apart. As you can see here, it breaks into these hydrogen ions and to nitrate ions. And this is a complete reaction. It goes all the way. That's why I have a single-headed arrow going to the right. It is a 100% reaction. So that means every, pretty much every single molecule of HNO3 is going to break apart into its ions. And there are only six acids like this. That would be nitric, uh, sulfuric, perchloric, as well as hydrochloric, uh, hydrobromic, and hydroiodic acid. Those are the six strong acids. Every other acid that we're going to work with in AP Chemistry is a weak acid. That means it's going to dissociate, break apart, much less. So an example of that might be acetic acid. Here's HC2H3O2. And when it reacts with water, it breaks apart into its component ions, hydronium and the acetate ion. And we can see that we've written it a little bit differently. We actually have an equilibrium going on here. In the first example, I had a single-headed arrow because it went 100% all the way. In the second reaction, we have an equilibrium. That's why I have a two-headed arrow there. Really, uh, this is not going to react even close to 100%. Usually, it's going to be way less than 5%. So weak acids don't dissociate nearly as much as strong acids do. Now. If you're having trouble writing these equations, we had a little practice with this in the last lesson, lesson 25. In this lesson, we're gonna kind of assume that you know how to do this. If you need some practice though, remember that if you take a weak acid, add it to water, the products are always going to be hydronium, this H3O plus ion, as well as the conjugate base of the acid. So in this case, it's the, the acetate ion. If you have no idea what a conjugate base is, you need to rewatch that video from Lesson 25. By the way, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel and uh, become a part of the AP Chemistry uh, family here uh, in my uh, channel, I'd encourage you to do that. Go ahead and uh, hit subscribe and like this video if you, uh, if you learn something from it. Now, let's take a look at how these problems work. When we talk about equilibrium, and we've already discussed equilibrium in this course several lessons ago, but equilibrium actually does help us to talk about weak acid dissociation. So here's that same reaction that we just wrote, and we notice that there is actually a constant that can help us to talk about how much. So we said, you know, weak acids dissociate less. Well, the question is how much less than a strong acid? Well, that's where this equilibrium constant comes in. Now, we're, we're using K once again, but we're adding another letter to our alphabet. So we've already had KC, we've had KP, we had KSP, we had KW in the last lesson. Well, here we're adding KA. And A, of course, stands for acids. And so the KA, the equilibrium constant for, for this reaction at 25 degrees Celsius, is going to be 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. And as you can see, that's a pretty small number. And as we've learned before, small equilibrium constants mean that the reaction uh, doesn't happen a lot. Okay, it's going to, uh, we'll have a lot of reactants over here, not too many product ions form. Now, let's compare that to another acid dissociation. Here's hydrocyanic acid. We dissolve that in water, and we get hydronium ions and cyanide ions. And notice that the Ka value here is even smaller, 4.9 
times 10 to the minus 10th. So that tells us that since that constant is even smaller, that we have even more reactants and we, we hardly have any products formed here. There's very little hydronium, very little cyanide formed in this dissociation process. So as you can see, the larger the value of Ka, we can say the stronger the acid is. We'll have more dissociation. Now both of these are weak acids. They don't dissociate that much. They're, they're both way less than 5%. But if you had to say which one is stronger, it would be acetic acid, wouldn't it? Because it's got a much larger value for Ka. So we can say that. And we can just estimate and say, you know, Ka is about 10 to the fifth times larger than the Ka for HCN. So that tells us that uh, that acetic acid is probably going to be about, you know, 10 to the fifth, about 100,000 times stronger than hydrocyanic acid. So, you know, we can just kind of eyeball that and see what happens. So let's try an example problem here. Let's rank these three acids in order of strength from strongest to weakest. Now, as you look at these three acids, I hope you can tell that one of them is a strong acid. It's one of our big six that we learned earlier in this course and that we repeated in this video, right? Nitric should jump out at us as being a strong acid. So that's the, that's the strongest. Now for these other two, lactic and boric, we're gonna need some Ka values to, to decide. So let's put those up here. And from those Ka values, can you see which one of the two is stronger? I hope you can see that the lactic acid has a larger value of Ka, a much larger value, in fact, like a, like a million times larger. So lactic acid is gonna be stronger and boric acid would be the weakest of those three acids. Now let's try a typical problem with a weak acid. We're gonna keep using acetic acid. We've used that a few times already in this video. The Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth at 25 degrees Celsius. So let's write the equilibrium constant expression for this acid dissociation. Well, to do that, we kind of need to write the reaction, don't we? So we're gonna take the acetic acid here, react it with water, and we get hydronium and acetate, you know, hydronium and then the, uh, the conjugate base, and the equilibrium constant expression is always products over reactants raised to the power of the coefficient. So it's gonna be hydronium concentration times acetate concentration all over acetic acid. That's equal to our Ka. Always leave out liquids. Okay, there are some students that forget to do that. You'll get counted off if you put liquid in there. Don't put, don't put water in this. Don't put water in its liquid form. Liquids and solids never go into equilibrium constant expressions. Let's go on to part B here. Calculate the H plus concentration in a 0.75 molar solution of acetic acid. Now, you might remember back to our equilibrium lessons when we learned about how to figure out concentrations with a Ka. Our best method was using an ice box, wasn't it? So we're gonna set up an ice box here and our acetic acid concentration is 0.75. So I'm gonna put that right here for initial concentration of acetic acid and our hydronium and acetate are both basically zero. Purple marbles, right? We might have talked about that earlier in this course. If we don't if it doesn't tell us how much we have at the beginning, it's safe to say it's zero, right? Um, and so if we do change here, we're gonna have a minus X because we don't have any equilibrium concentrations. The hydronium and the acetate change will have to be plus X. So we'll put that in here. That leaves our equilibrium as 0.75 minus X, X, and X. So now we're gonna take these values and plug them into the equilibrium constant expression that we just wrote up here in part A. So I'm gonna use a new slide here, and we're gonna plug that in. So we have x times x all over 0.75 minus x equals our Ka, which is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, there's a little trick that we learned several lessons ago. If you forgot about the 5% rule, you might want to remember it now or go back and watch that video if you haven't learned it yet. But since this is a weak acid 
and our Ka is you know about 10 to the minus fifth or smaller, we can ignore this negative x or this this x here in the denominator. So I'm gonna just like mark that out. So I'm gonna just obliterate that here. And so we're gonna assume that x is less than 5% of what it's being subtracted from. So now we can cross multiply and we get, let's see here, that's 1.35 times 10 to the minus fifth equals x squared. So now when I take the square root, I can find what x is. It's about 0 0.00367 and x is equal to our hydronium concentration, so H plus or H3O plus, right? Basically interchangeable. And so that's our answer to part B. The H plus concentration is 0 0.00367 moles per liter. So now, to find the pH, we just take the negative log of the H plus. So when we plug that into our calculator, we should get an answer of about 2.43. Now, part D, what is the percent dissociation of this acid solution? Well, the way this works is we're going to take the x and subtract, uh, not subtract, divide it by what we were subtracting it from. So x divided by 0.75 in this case, of course, times 100 to make it into a percent, and it's going to be 0.49%. So that means that this acid is way less than 5% dissociated. Now, if our answer had been over 5%, well, then we'd have had to, you know, not ignore this minus x over here and go back in and use quadratic formula, which we really don't like to do. But percent dissociation is just this value right here divided by whatever that value is times 100. So there we have a good example of this. Let's try one more example to see how this works. Here we have a 0.85 molar solution of hypochlorous acid, HClO, that's obtained in the lab. And we take a pH meter and find that the pH of this solution is 3.76. Calculate the H plus of the solution and the Ka of this acid at this temperature. So here we have the acid uh, dissociation reaction written out already. That's kind of nice. We have the HClO plus water. We have hydronium ions and hypochlorite, which is the, uh, the conjugate base. So if we know that the pH is 3.76, we can figure out the H plus concentration, can't we? Well, we learned that in the last lesson. So if the pH is 3.76, we just take 10 to the negative 3.76 to find out the H plus concentration. That's called the negative antilog. You probably have a button on your calculator specifically devoted to that, right? So when you key that in, you'll find that H plus is about 1.72 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter. So there's our, our first part of the question, 1.72 times, times 10 to the negative fourth. Now with this information, I think we can go straight into solving for Ka. Because, you see, if we know what H plus is, that's this, this right here. We just said it's 1.72 times 10 to the minus fourth. I'm pretty sure we know what ClO negative is, right? If this is the concentration of hydronium and it's a one to one ratio, it's the same thing, isn't it? Hypochlorite is also 1.72 times 10 to the minus fourth molar. And we know that hypochlorous acid you know, should be very close to 0.85 molar. I know a little bit of that is gonna dissociate, but it's very, very small. And we can just say it's, it's very, very close to 0.85. So we can plug these numbers right into our equilibrium constant expression. So, you know, products over reactants raise the power of the coefficient. So I'm gonna plug these numbers in just like this, you know, 1.72 times 10 to the minus four for those two numbers on top and 0.5 for the denominator. And when we key this into our calculator, we find that Ka is equal to about 3.5 times 10 to the negative eighth. So this is a very weak acid, isn't it? So uh, it's safe to say that very little of our 0.85 molar was gonna dissociate at all. So did you learn something from the video about Ka's and weak acids and how to find their uh, pH and the H plus concentration. If you did, if you would be so kind as to smash that like button, I would really appreciate it. That way uh, YouTube will share my videos with other chemistry students as well. My name is Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching AP chemistry for 
over 20 years, and I want you to make an A in your chemistry class, a five on your AP chemistry exam, if that's what you're taking. Hope you'll join me again on my next video where, we're, where, we're, where we'll learn some more chemistry, acid-base chemistry, together.